of uh I'm sorry I'm late. No problem. No problem at all. How are you? I'm good. I'm all right. Farah. If I tell you I see you as a best friend, that certainly is an understatement. Reasons? You saw me and you liked me. You went out of your way to trust me. You trusted me enough to give me information which ordinarily shouldn't be given out. And courtesy of that your information, it's now glaring to everybody that my father was actually murdered. Yeah, you said that already. And now I want to ask you a very simple question. What are you going to do? God, they say, walks in mysterious ways. I believe this is a time that God has chosen to unmask every single person that was involved in the murder of my father. Hmm. And may I know why you said that? There are cities filled with evil men and good men equally. I work with a group of very powerful men who love justice, who seek justice, who fight for justice. My father's blood will continue to cry out for justice. Um, sorry Alice, I don't mean to be too forward, but who are these men you're working with? Vera, I want to be certain. I want to be very sure of every person I meet and every decision I will make before I squeal anything to anyone. No offense, but I certainly will let you know. Um, did you find anything? I still haven't searched the officer. I've actually been very busy. But I, I have the death certificate. That's what I came to give to you. Oh, good, good, good. Lovely. Right. Ah, this is wonderful. Be great help. And but please, I have to say something to you. Very carefully. This case must not be discussed with anybody. Is that clear? Yes, sir. For our own safety. Apart from you and your mom. Nobody else. Is that clear? No problem, sir. My lips are sealed. All right. I'm working with that police officer at the moment. Uh, in, in, good, in good time, you will meet him. He's very much on our side. And he too advised that you should not discuss this case with anyone. No problem, sir. No problem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Some members of your group said that you are not showing enough commitment. As a thorough Christian woman, and I want to know what your problems are. I'm sorry, Mother, but I don't understand what you mean by not showing enough commitment. You did not take part in the all-night video of the choir members. And I want to know your reasons. Oh, that. I wasn't in town. I want you to go and see Pastor Henry. Pastor Henry? What would I be doing, Pastor Henry? I want him to lay hands on you and pray for you. Already he has conducted the deliverance on the choir members, except you. <laughs> Mother, to tell you the truth, I don't need prayers to sing properly in the choir. I am sorry, Steph. I am not talking about you singing ability but all i'm telling you is the decision of the church you must go to pastor henry if you're still interested in remaining in that choir did i make myself clear <clears throat> yes yes ma'am yes I know you? I was asked to come and meet with you. Well, well, 
would you be asked to come and see me? I'm a member of Omega Dynamic Ward Assembly. Not Pastor Henry, that anchored the deliverance for choir members. Oh, he, 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 you were a member of that choir? <laughs> I'm not just a member of the body. I practically wrote our praise manual. Mm. Mm -hmm. Even Pastor Timothy has had countless reasons to commend me for my dedication and commitment. That's good to know. That's good to know. Well, in that case, have a seat. Please sit down. Thank you, sir. Alice, I called you here to say that I am impressed with your painters. Thank I'm you, happy with the speed and I, I think I love the color combination. Thank you very much, sir. Now, can they paint the entire compound? Yes, sir. But any need for that? Yeah, serious need. The original plan was for us to give the conference hall a facelift. You came up with the idea of painting the hall inside and outside. Yes, sir. Now we have a situation where the hall is looking different from the other structures we have within the compound, and I think that is not right. So I want you to discuss with your painters. Let them put up another proposal to that effect. I will, sir. Thank you, sir. No problem. Hey, one more thing, Alice. You are required to be with me in Abuja this weekend. I'll just get ready. Prepare. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Well, young lady, what can I do for you? What are you doing? You like what you see, Pastor. Do you realize I'm a man of God? Man of God. You see, Pastor, there are things that happen in the church that ordinary members don't get to hear. One of such I want us to experience now. Look, look, young lady, you have fallen prey to the antics of Satan. <laughs> you should surrender under the, under, under the power of heaven, the supremacy of God. Talk about submission and surrender. You know, I already surrendered oh, to you. Oh, Yoko, now you can grab. Come on. Huh? See, that's the problem. You prayed yourself to the bone marrow, huh? Don't, you don't need do someone like more. Don't do this. So easy now, Pastor. Step, step, step away from me. Come to my Don't come close. Don't. I you. bind you. I bind you. You Delilah. I bind Delilah. You. Come on, God. Don't. Don't do this. I will go to pull it down. Pull it down. Go to pull it down. I don't know how I feel. I am a man of God. Oh God. I confess your sins. Oh, you should repent and be born again. Your sins should be confessed. Zainab, I remember telling you this earlier, but for the purpose of emphasis, I will say it again. Zainab, you're beginning to attach yourself to me in a manner that might jeopardize my mission to the state. Sir. What did I do? Whatever we do outside should stay outside. Don't get carried away, please. But I thought I've been very professional about this. That is what you think. I know you've not been professional. Listen to me. I'm here for something very, very important. Do you understand me? And please, I don't need us to, you know, let our one night of extra activity or one night of ecstasy jeopardize my mission at hand, please. Now you may go back to your duties. Yes, sir. I want to put it to you that there can never, never be two captains in a ship. I am the captain here, and I want my orders obeyed explicitly. I am a police officer, and as such, I can never be a captain. Are you cracking jokes with me? I only made an emphatic statement, sir. I am a police officer. I am not in the Navy, and as such, I can never be a captain. 
I want to know exactly where you got that 1987 information from and I want it now! I am still investigating and as such I do not want undue interference from compromised officers. You're calling me compromised again? A credible officer will not hold meetings with criminals. You accepted before me that you hold meetings with the Mafia which I have taken into account. Now, if a credible officer doesn't do it and you do it, that makes you not credible and compromised. Don't put more words into my mouth, sir. You have up till the end of business day to provide me the source of your information. Otherwise... Otherwise what, sir? You wait. You wait to find out what I will do to you if you fail to comply before the end of business day today. You don't have to wait until the end of business today. If there's anything you want to do, go ahead and do it now. Because I will never, ever tell you my source, sir. Sir. What's the problem? You're not looking too good. I've been calling Pastor Henry and he refused to pick his calls. Oh. Okay. Let me call him. She's not picking. Hello. Hello, hello, Pastor. Pastor Henry has been shot in his office. Brother Jesus. What? Henry has been shot. What are you talking about? Some people came into his office and saw him in his own pool of blood. Where is she? They rushed him down to the intensive care unit at the general hospital. Pastor, please hurry, he's going to die. Henry has been shot, he's in the hospital. Come on, let's go. Jesus. Inspector Chile. Oh, okay. Yes, Central okay. Police Station. You are the inspector. Barrister is waiting for you at home. He said I should give you this address. Meet him at home. This way. Your secretary said uh, I should come meet you at home. So I ask why you summoned me here, sir. Uh, yes. I have additional clue. And what clue is this? This is a copy of a death certificate. I got it from the girl who brought the case. I want you to investigate it. Does this girl live alone or does she live with someone? She lives with her mother. Oh, by the way, she works at A&D Incorporated as a secretary to the general manager. Please, sir. I 
I need you to tell her to relocate to an unknown address with her mom. Why? Security. The Mafia might want to know my source yes. and remember them. Yes. We can't leave anything to chance. So please just tell them to relocate, all right? And operate from there. Consider it done. Thank you. And again, please don't call me with your phone anymore. Call right. me with a private line or call me with a public phone. I'll do same. Right. right. And when you call, just say a call from Vigo. I'll know it's you. Hang up. Vigo. Yes. Right. Thank you. Um, now, uh, shall we go and have something to drink? Yes, uh, no, no, no. Time is of the essence. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. Yes, okay. Some other time. Sorry. Thank you. Doctor, what's going on? What is that saying, please? Calm down. Pastor Harry is in the intensive care unit. Sister Eve said the same. I want to go and see him. No, you can't. Our doctors are doing everything possible to remove the bullet that is hooked to his bamboo. So you can't see him. Doctor, please. Are you sure Pastor Harry is not dead? Oh, come off it, woman. He is not dead. Well, I may tell you that his condition is critical. But I can assure you that he's not going to die. Doctor, are you telling me that you're not going to allow me to go in there to say prayer for the dying man? You can say your prayer anywhere, but I allow you into the theater where our surgeons are working? I'm sorry, sir. It's not possible. So, how far have you gone with your treatment? I'm, I'm good now. I'm okay. As you can see, I'm okay. It's good once in a while you visit the doctor. Even when you think you're healthy, if I didn't go, I could have been dead by now. It was there that I discovered that my system was on the verge of collapsing. But I thank God I'm, I'm, I'm alive now. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm, I'm, not, I'm equally happy. I'm happy you are back. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was coming in and I saw some painters working everywhere. What's going on? Oh, that. You know, my secretary, I told her that we needed a facelift for the conference hall in preparation for the, you know, forthcoming shareholders meeting. Yeah. And after the facelift of the conference hall, she came up with the idea of painting the hall, both inside and outside. And after painting of the conference hall, you know, we started to see this, uh, the, you know, this discrepancy between this very hall and the other structures within the, within the company. So I, I asked her to also paint the entire environment. And the budget seems to be very low. That's why you see painters everywhere. Well, well I can say she's, uh, she's good. No, Benson, I think you are underrating this girl. She's not just good, she is very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's by the way. Have you had the news making the rounds? The news making the rounds, is it in the city or in the company? And the company. In the company, I have not heard anything. Amanda, your former secretary, is pregnant for Mr. Cowrie. And he's planning to marry her. Mr. Cowrie is planning to marry Amanda? Right. In this company? If that should happen, I'm telling you both of them will leave this company. You should be worried, Mr. Carrefour. Worried over what? You should be worried that you were not able to make that girl pregnant for 11 years, you dated her. What? People are beginning to think that you're not man enough. Wait, are you telling me that people knew I was dating her the time she was working for me? Come on, Mr. Crawford, there is nothing hidden under the sun. See, you've dated that girl for 11 years. And you could not put her in the family work. But just a couple of months with Mr. Cowrie, she's already with the child. I'm sorry, Benson, but you must be an imbecile. To ever think that I am in the same level with Mr. Kaori. Why did he come to me? Why didn't you go to Kaori? Yes, I dated. What am I? Man, I don't understand. Why would Mr. Kaori go into that woman's role? Why? 
in this new millennium, in this age. Of course, I dated her, but I never entered her role because I know what I'm doing. I'm a civilized person. Do me one favor. Go back to Mr. Kaori in his office, look into his face and tell him that he's an idiot to have gone into that woman role without any protection. You know, I don't, what are they talking about? They are opening raw and they are entering raw in this business environment and you are coming here to discuss that thing with me? I have spoken to the police officer and I think he has made a very good suggestion. What did he suggest, sir? That you and your mom should relocate to another unknown address. Why? His, um, his source has been investigated. And soon they might remember your mother. So it is very prudent to, to take your mother to an unknown address. Are they that powerful? You are dealing with mafia. They are heartless and ruthless. They will kill an entire gathering looking for one person. Oh yes, I'm not bat an eyelid. Or if you if you ever cross their path, consider yourself dead. But we don't have another house. Where do we move to? Well, um, well, I have a flat in one of my buildings, and uh, you you can you can you can go there. It was a, a, a space I, I wanted for a guest house. But you can have it for now, as a temporary measure. Where is the flat? Uh, uh, the street behind yours. I'll have to speak to my mother about this, and I'll get back to you. No, you haven't got that time. You must move tonight. So urgent. Dealing with criminals. Ruthless criminals. <sighs> that reminds me, sir. I actually saw a document in my father's wardrobe. It's dated 1983, May. But the account statement has my father's name as the account holder. I don't know if it's of any importance to you. My dear, it could be of utmost importance. Have, 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 have you got it there? Oh, I, I didn't know it was going to be important, so I didn't bring it. But if you want it, I could get it for you. Oh, yes. Yes, I think it, it could be very, very important. I will get it across to you, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you my dear. What is your card number? A woman, I am not sick. I'm here to see the medical director for something urgent and official, not help. Uh -huh. Yes. Do you know his office? If I knew his office, I wouldn't be wasting my time asking you this question. I need to see him real quick. Time is running. Okay. Enter from this passage, the second door by the right. That's his office. Okay. Thank you very much. I will keep searching till I find. Yes, come in. Good evening, sir. Good afternoon. Please do sit down. Oh, thank you. How will I help you? I'm Inspector Jide. And I'm looking for the medical director. I'm the medical director. Good. Did this originate from your office? Anything the matter? You signed it? No, I didn't sign it. Then who signed it? Professor Leonard, the former medical director, did. Where is he? Oh, he's retired. Retired as in resting or retired as in dead? No, he's not dead. Professor Leonard is just retired from active service. Where can I find him? In his house, of course. All right. Um, please kindly do write his address for me.
Um, mm. The man is old. Don't dream so much. If anyone comes here asking you any question, do not give him any detail. We, the police, are trying to unveil some criminals. Now, helping the police is part of your civic responsibility. I'm sure you do understand that. How am I sure you are not one of the criminals out there? Because I'm leaving your office and you're still alive. Criminals live with tales of woes and sorrows. Have a nice day, sir. There is more to it than meets the eyes. Something is wrong somewhere. Things are not as they seem to be. Something is hidden somewhere. So, uh, how is your health, sir? I'm getting better. Have you been able to find out the source? Well, I uh, am doing an entirely different thing altogether. I got talking with the young inspector this afternoon and I found out that he doubted me when I told him that I knew the Mafia. Um, from the way things are going, he might even end up working for us. <laughs> you know, he initially was scared that, uh, you know, I was trying to set him up. So what have you done? Yes, he, he wants an evidence of 10 million naira. Yes. For me to convince him that I actually know you, I know the mafia. Huh. I don't understand what you're saying. Well, all we have to do is package this money in a briefcase. I take it to him. He sees it. He knows it is coming from the Mafia. And I bring it back. You know, just something to show him that, you know, I have a good relationship with the Mafia. Are you sure he's not setting us up? <laughs> of course, he won't do that. Uh, I am his superior, definitely. Uh, no, no, no. He, 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 he's not planning any setup for us. He just needs to be convinced. That's all. That is all. Okay. I want you to come here tomorrow at 11 o'clock. All right, sir. All right, sir. And that will be done. <laughs> and uh, I, I hope you just uh, take a lot of rest and... I'll be all right. You know, take a lot of water and relax. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll see you tomorrow at 11. Tomorrow at 11. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. This is the zenith of my leniency. If you do not bring that idiot here, I will suggest that you commit suicide. That would be a better option for you. If you kill yourself, then you won't have any problem at all. If you allow me to send my men after you, to kill you, they're going to do it very slowly. And when they do that, they set your corpse ablaze. <laughs> no, there will not be any reason for all that. Better make sure, Commander. Thank you, sir. It can be good or bad. It can bring happiness. Or sadness, it can solve problems and cause problems. That's money, the power of money. It can put a smile on your face or make you cry. It can bring sanity or cause insanity. It can turn people to monsters. Hi, oh, darling. You extremely romantic. Oh, you like? I'm impressed. You like? <laughs> Thank you. Like, you know, my business is to make you happy. And whenever you say you're happy, you're impressed, oh my god, I feel so confused. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Can you tell me one good reason why Pastor Timothy has not paid a dime into my account, can you? <laughs> well, 
I do know that I've taken care of Pastor Henry. And having done that, Pastor Timothy is gone. Because you see, my dear, Pastor Henry is actually his spinal cord. <laughs> and now that he's handled, Pastor Timothy is nothing. Trust me. I do not understand what you're talking about. Well, maybe we should call to the bedroom and not show what I mean. Come on. <laughs> okay. Don't you understand that sometimes I'm too old? Inspector Jide from Central Police Station, and I'd like to have a talk with Prof. Oh, please do have a seat. I'll join you right away. You're welcome. Ah, thank you, Um, sir, there is uh, this document uh, we are tracing, and uh, the medical director at your former place of work said you actually signed it. Can I see the document? Ah, of course. Of course, of course. Uh, it's a uh, death certificate of the late Richard Nebolisa. I need you to look at this certificate and tell me if you signed it, sir. Yes. I'm the one who signed the document. I signed it in my capacity as the medical director then. Oh, good, good, good. Splendid, splendid. So, what was the cause of this death? The cause of the death is written in that document. Just can't you see? You're with your eyes there. Uh, sir, I am not a medical director, you know. I'm just a police officer. Uh, you signed this document, so I need you to explain to me the cause of his death. Um, if you insist, the man died from cardiac arrest. Sir, so I need you to... Be careful what you say, you know. Tell me the truth. Because evidence reaching the police say that he was actually murdered. So, sir, I need you just to tell me the truth and nothing but the truth. Because else I will support you to court. You are an old man and I know you wouldn't like that. Inspector Jide, or whatever you call yourself, what else do you want from my husband? I mean, why are you grinding him? He has told you everything that he knows. What is all this? Madam, your husband must answer all my questions. Ha. What exactly do you want from me? The truth. Prof, did you conduct a proper post-mortem on late Richard Nebolisa before writing his death certificate? You're welcome. Why did you bring me here? Um, I want you to assure me that you are still committed to the promise you made. Well, that depends on the particular promise you're talking about. All right. I had a dream where some relevant government authorities came asking after the circumstances surrounding the exit of Richard Nebulisa Esquire. 
That is, if you know what that portends. Wait a minute. Professor Leonard, you mean you invited me here to come and discuss your dreams? I'm sorry, Sir Bruno, but I killed the man because you promised to cover my track. Now, I, I want you to reassure me that that promise still stands. <laughs> Without any fear of contradiction, I give you my word that everything is perfectly under control. You're wasting my time, old man. I don't know what you want, but I have told you what I know. Prof, you have a good opportunity of redeeming your image right now. Don't force me to get the truth out of you. And again, don't force me to see you as one of those evil men holding this city down. I don't know what you are talking about, officer. I don't know what you are talking about. Will you leave me alone? Just leave me officer, alone. leave my husband alone. He has told you all that he knows. Leave him alone. All right then. I'll be seeing you. Honey, it's okay. It's okay. Searching till I find the truth. I will keep searching till I get to the root. Justice. What happened? Any luck? He didn't say anything. His countenance failed him, though. I knew he was lying. Okay, let's go. Justice is all I see. I will keep searching till I find the truth. I will keep searching till I get to the Justice is all I seek to quench my curiosity. There is more to it than meets the eyes. Something I hope I'll meet you awake when I come back, baby. Honey, where are you off to? Of course, to see a friend. I'll come back in a jiffy. By this time? Can't it wait till tomorrow? Don't worry. Like I said, I'll be back in a jiffy. It's somehow urgent. Okay. See you. Be careful, eh? I'll see you when I come back. But some memory. I wasn't expecting to see you in the house. I hope everything is all right. Everything. I mean, every single thing is not all right. Why did you say so? Good. One police inspector, Jide, just left my house. He knows everything. I mean, every detail, he knows it. By the way, you promised me that you were going to cover everything. But at the end of the day, you succeeded in covering nothing. This man told me point blank that Richard Nebolisa was killed. You can see that by this singular act, you are going to ruin my retirement. Did you tell him anything? How could I? How could I tell him anything? However, I managed to tell him that the man died from cardiac arrest. Oh, good. Good. Relax. Everything will be all right. Just relax. Don't let Jide, Inspector Jide, bother you at all. Uh, are you sure you are going to handle this situation? Don't you trust me anymore? Relax. Everything will be all right. 
Just relax. Uh, let me get your favorite drink. Honorable Sir Bruno. The only Mr. Fix it the whole universe. I am the one that they couldn't arrest. You could say that again. See, all over the world, men and women always dream of whining and dining with the powers that be. You see, I am the personification of the powers that be. You could say it again. <laughs> Just wait for me, let me get a drink. This is your favorite wine. I've kept it in my room for seven years. Oh, I know it will taste real good. It will taste real better now. Yes. Shall remain the men who will control this city. Oh yes, oh yes. Mm. Mm. This wine remains the best wine ever. I know the value. <laughs> That's why I kept it. <laughs>
knows what happened? We were eating. When one police inspector, Jide, from the central police station, entered our house, he came with a death certificate. I wanted to find out if it was my husband that signed it. My husband confirmed that he signed it. He wanted to know the cause of the death. And my husband said that the man died of cardiac arrest. The police inspector said that there was fresh evidence to prove otherwise that the man was murdered. My husband insisted that he died of cardiac arrest. Then the man left. Barely 10 minutes after, my, hus my husband dressed up to leave the house. I asked him where he was going to. He said he was going to see a friend. I asked him that couldn't wait till morning, but he insisted that it was urgent. He came back after about an hour. We all prayed and went to sleep. He actually laid on the same bed with me. There was no struggle. There was no scream. Only for me to wake up this morning to find my husband dead. Stone dead. My husband died. <laughs> um, did he mention the name of this friend he was visiting? He did not. He did not. He just died. <laughs> Take heart. Huh? <laughs> Sir, yes. what Mr. Larry wants to see you? Larry, he specifically called my name. Yes, sir. He mentioned your name. All right, send him in. Yes, sir. Good day, officer. Yes, good day, my brother. How are you? I'm fine, but not very fine. Very fine, sir. I'll sit down. So, my brother, what can I do for you? Um, my name is Larry. I'm the younger brother to Professor Leonard. Well, I must say your brother, Professor Leonard, is not a friend of the police. Why do you say that? There is a murder case I'm investigating presently, and I know he has a lot of explanation to make. I quizzed him, and he didn't tell me anything. Definitely he was lying. But trust me, I will be with him this night. He has to speak for his own good, else I will force him to. You don't have to go there tonight. And why do you say so? Do you have information for me? Um, my brother passed away last night. You're not serious, are you? I'm serious. I'm actually here because his widow told me you came around last night. Ah, why, 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 why? What is this? He doesn't have to die now. He doesn't have any reason to die now. Oh my God. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. Please forgive me, okay? I'm sorry about his death, but he hasn't answered my questions. He didn't want to die either, you know? What do you mean by that? Do you know your brother was part of the mafia? And he could have committed suicide in order not to jeopardize his organization or expose the mafia. Are you, are you suggesting that my brother killed himself? <sighs> Look, I've not said anything, but, but, but I'm not saying that, but still it's a possibility, huh? Well, when you left last night, his wife told me you, he drove to visit an unidentified friend. He came back, slept, and then could not wake up this morning. You know what you're going to do? You're going to go to your people. Tell them the police want to conduct a post-mortem on his corpse. Don't bury him just yet. Yes. The information you gave me concerning your exploits with your inspector. It, it's authentic, sir. How can it be authentic? When your man has been going about asking everybody Questions. How can that be? I, I, I was still with him this morning, and he even asked me about the evidence that I said I was going to bring, and I assured him that 
I'll bring it this afternoon. He went to Professor Leonard and questioned him so much. The man nearly broke down and started singing. You understand? If he meant well, if he was interested in joining my company, why would you go about questioning people like that? That, if it's that, sir, I don't think is a problem. You know, he doubts us. He's worried that we are setting him up. That's why he's so serious with the so-called investigation. You know, you, you just give me the evidence he asked for, and when I show him, I might eventually bring him here. All right. Uh, Todd. Todd. Open that box for him. Yes. This is money, though it's, it is not 10 million. There are millions there. And that's what you asked for. If you fail this time, man, you are a dead man. Well, you have just given me the tool, you know, to bring him here. Just leave the rest to me. I'll handle it. Thank you, sir. You better not fail this time. Thank you. In my career, I've seen the Mafia move several. Mm. But I would say that the way they move in the city is the most dangerous I've ever seen. Why do you say that? I went to visit the man who signed the death certificate last night. I questioned him to get some facts. He was lying. Then I left. Then I gathered he went to see a friend. Unidentified though. Came back, slept, never woke up. This is serious. I like to see the girl and her mother. I like to question her mother. She's still a suspect, I am sorry. And I will not play down on this suspicion until I've quizzed her mother properly. Right, okay. Yeah, um, I'll take you to their home. Good, good. Oh, by the way, that girl has actually found yet another lead. The best so far, in my view. Her father's bank statement. Oh, yes. And the, uh, the bank is still alive. You will not believe this. He had seven million dollars in 1987. <laughs> now, luckily, the bank still exists. So what you have got to do is find out if the money is still there or it has disappeared. One of the reasons why he was killed. The moment she came into my office, I knew I was in trouble. You know, she began to exhibit some seductive movements that I didn't understand. You know, and suddenly she began to take off her clothes and she just rushed at me like that and I was so helpless. I'm sorry, Pastor Henry. I am very, very sorry, but you should have run for your dear life. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. I, I was taken in by her story. She, she told me she was the one that wrote the press manual for the choir. And I was thinking I was dealing with her Christian sister until I found out who she was. I, I, you know, she came at me like that and I was shocked. At what point did she pull the trigger? I don't know. Honestly, I don't remember. I, I think even I was shocked. But I remember trying to resist her and she was forcing herself on me. Then I passed out and, and I woke up in a hospital and they told me they had removed uh, one bullet from my backbone and all that. To think that that kind of girl is in a Pentecostal choir beats my imagination. I still cannot believe it. Okay, she even claims she, she claimed you know her well. I saw it coming. In fact, I had the revelation. 
And that is why I called for that deliverance session. You see, we may have to disband the choir. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Because Steph is not and cannot be the only one that is possessed in that choir. I can believe this. To imagine that I regarded her as one of the best singers in that choir. Oh, it beats my trust. Yeah, I want um, the history of a particular account, so who do I get to meet? The manager, the accountant, or you? It depends on what you want. I can make such inquiries, but when I can, I will try to my the purse. Well, I think I'm fine by you. You see, I am currently investigating the murder of a particular prominent man who gave birth to a very beautiful girl just like you. Uh, the matter was left unresolved for a number of years, but right now the long arms of justice are about to force themselves out. Well, the daughter of this said man gave me this statement of account. And um, this is what I want you to do. Look it up in your system, open it, and tell me what you see. Thank you, man. Well, thank you very much. Um, of course, a beautiful banker like you is expected to do beautiful things. Wow. What's the matter? No, but you have to see the manager. What's the problem? Nothing. But there are certain things he alone has to explain to you. So where can I find the manager? He's not on seat now. You can come again tomorrow. Alright. I'll come tomorrow then. Now. So can I have my statement? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, Inspector Judy, from the Central Police Station, and uh, this is Alice, the young lady who brought the case to our notice, and her mother. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm very happy meeting you two face to face. Uh, because uh, I did call this meeting. I didn't need necessary actually for us to meet today. Ah, yes, he did tell us of all the efforts you've made in resolving the matter. Well, when I instructed that you should leave your former place of abode, you thought I was kidding. The truth of the matter is that the Mafia visited that place. I imagine what would have happened if they found you there. What? When was that? This morning. Oh my God. Officer, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I am surprised that all these are happening. I never knew my husband was killed. He hid all the information from me. And I was under the impression that he died naturally. Well, tell me every single thing you remember. Starting with how he died. <sighs> he woke up normally that day and left after eating his breakfast of pounded yam and salad soup. He ate the same breakfast every other morning. He came back around 8 p.m. I can remember that night, he smoked in the sitting room for about 10 minutes and went to bed. Meanwhile, he had quit smoking before, but he smoked again that night. I later joined him in bed, and he was already asleep. I didn't touch him. He was snoring like he does all night. But I managed to sleep. I was the first to wake up in the morning. It has never occurred. It has never happened. Unlike him, he will be the first to wake up, but that day, I was the one to wake up first. I turned on the light and noticed that he was not breathing. I touched him. 
and he was too cold. Too cold. I knew what that means. So I ran out and called the neighbors. They came in and confirmed him dead. That was it. Hmm. It has never occurred to me that <laughs> he was killed. So did he, did he struggle that night? <sighs> Not at all. He didn't struggle. The same position I met him in the night was the way he was when I woke up in the morning. Do you know his business interests? Mm, he never allowed me to know. He made it a law that once he entered the house, that business must not be discussed. He kept me in the dark, but he would give you whatever you want, anytime you want it. So if you had an account, for example, you wouldn't even know? We operated a joint account in which he deposited 5 million naira, and that was the money I'm using now for my business. Well, I went to visit and questioned the doctor who signed your late husband's death certificate. Information reaching me says he died the same way your husband did. What? Hmm. Officer, are you suspecting anything? The Mafia killed them. I am sorry, Larry. Go and tell that police officer of yours that I cannot allow such nonsense in this family. If he wants a postmodern, then he must wait for his own father to die, then he can perform such experiment on him. Do you understand me? I cannot allow my brother to be used for such laboratory experiments. Do you understand? Bros, I don't know why you are misunderstanding this whole matter. The police are suspecting our brother was murdered. And they want to investigate. And if you look at the whole circumstances surrounding his, his death, I agree with them. The police have warned that we should not bury him. Did you hear that? Who is that police officer to tell me not to bury my brother? Who is that police officer? Do you know what the postmodern is? They want to pick up the professor and uh, uh, and, this, uh, 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 and, uh, and and cut him into two in the in the, in, in the name of experiments. So that what 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 trash is that? I would never allow such happen to my brother. But um, bro, if the police still insist on going on with investigations, why don't we allow them? If not, they will conclude that the late professor was murdered by members of this family, and could of course the press will not investigate before calling out the murderers. Please, let us allow the police to do their work. I rant nonsense. The press can write whatever they want to write. I do not care. If they write rubbish today, I will debunk it the next day. You understand me? My brother died of natural cause. He slept and did not wake up just like our ancestors. Any what, what, what rubbish is this? How would I allow my brother, a professor, to be taken as laboratory experiment for small nurses who jump from bed to bed to see his nakedness? It will not happen. I, the Alatisi of, of Agoju, would never allow such to happen. Do you understand that? If I allow such, even the ancestors will strike me dead. Sir, you sent for me. Zainab, sit down. So tell me, what are your findings and why has the area commander not been coming to work? I understand he travelled, sir. Travelled? I mean, he couldn't have travelled without a handover, without telling anybody. Are you really sure you went to his house? Sir, I am a very serious officer. I went to his house and the guard said he travelled. Could he have been killed by the Mafia? Sir, please, you need to slow down on the tempo and rest. The way you're going, you may break down. Rest. When the city is on fire. Do you know what you're talking about? What are you up to? Nothing. I was thinking maybe you'll come around tonight. You know what? Um, you go back to the counter, all right? And don't come back here until I tell you to. Yeah, stay there. On another note, you go with some officers to the area commander's house, okay? Comb the place, drill the guard. You may never know when you get proper information. 
You may leave now. Guys, I'm thinking of taking a trip to the Caribbean. Here, <coughs> you Caribbean. <laughs> What's that? What's funny? What exactly are you going to do at the Caribbean? You see, there's this girl, I mean, very lovely girl that saw me on Facebook and went crazy. And she invited me over, you know. I'm thinking of having a moment of bliss with her at one of the best beaches in the Caribbean. I'm serious, I'm going to finish that girl. <laughs> Saka. What? Should I tell you the truth? And what's the truth? You have to be careful. Sure will, I'll be careful. <laughs> you. You just have to be very careful. What's the problem? I will be careful. <laughs> No, you see, Caribbean is not just the kind of place you just go like that. Wait, don't be missing one and maybe Facebook. Don't be Facebook. Let me get the girl come. Ah. Well, that's Boss, that's... are you pondering what I'm pondering? No, sir. The area commander he has made away with my money. Remember the money you opened for him to see? Yes, sir. Yes. He has escaped with it. He came with the story that uh, the inspector wanted to see 10 million naira before he joins us. It was all lies. He just wanted to take the money and run away. Luckily, I didn't give him 10 million. He took 3 million. What exactly do you want us to do, sir? I want us to bring the area commander here. Yes, with my money. But in case you don't find the area commander, look for whoever has seen him bring him here. If you can't find who has seen him, look for who has heard about the area commander, wherever he is. Bring him here. The truth is that you must bring somebody here. Am I clear? Right. You stay behind. Mafia killed the owner of that account. Now I want you to do a rundown on that account and tell me everything you deem very important. Uh, t please tell me exactly what you want. I want to know when last the account was operated. Because of the 17th day of June, 1987, the owner of that account paid $1.5 million into a particular account. Now, I want to know if the money was paid from that account. I want to know the accounts that received this payment. And I want to know if there was any transaction from that account thereafter. You see, on the 18th of June, 1987, the owner of that account died. Now I want you to give me a documentary rundown on this particular account because I want to unveil the murderers of the owner of the account. Okay, let me check my computer. Okay, the account was a current account. It is now dormant because it has not been operated for years. The account is a dollar account and the owner is uh, Richard Nebolisa. He used this account for several international transfers. As a 10th day of June, the account had credit balance of 17 million 420,000 US dollars. On the 12th, he wired 10 million US dollars to Oceanic Oils in Ivory Coast. And on the 17th, he issued a certified check of 1.5 million to Agrippa Investment Limited and on the 29th the account received a credit transfer of six million dollars from Mark and Bush Incorporated and on the 30th a credit transfer of five million dollars were received from Atlantic Vessels Canada that was the last credit and um, on the first day of July, 1987, a check of $10 million in favor of Bruno and Company was presented and the manager then refused to honor the check because 
they were already aware that the account owner had died. <coughs> see, that manager was blown into pieces as he was coming back from the fellowship with the wife. Mm. And was the blast investigated? Yes. The, the police said the manager was a terrorist and that the bomb inside his car exploded and killed him. And the bank believed this? Uh, we didn't believe it. The management knew it was a farce. That was police report. What could we do? All right then. Um, could you please um, print out this report you just gave me right now? Alice, I want you to understand that there is a problem. But don't bother yourself because I'm doing everything possible to solve it. What is the problem, sir? The board members. The entire board members are not happy with your employment. All of them. And they have instructed that I fire you. Does that mean I'm fired? Never. I am the general manager here. And I have the right to hire and to fire anybody that I want. I'm not going to fire you because I want you to be around here with me. I called you here because I want to find out. Can we work together? Sure, sir. We are together. I think I know why they want me fired. Why? You know, Benson seems to know the reason, but I don't know why he's not opening up to me. What is the reason? Why do they want you out? We can't talk here, sir. Maybe we can talk outside. Perhaps at night. Okay, by me. But no matter what happens, I want you to understand that I want you to be around here with me. I'm happy to be with you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Well, uh, Barrister, I don't have any more time to waste. I've already discussed with the bank manager and he says the account has a credit balance of $16.5 million. Whoa! Yes, yes, yes. And the wife's name is there as the next of kin. So this is what I need you to do, sir. Start the process of a letter of administration for the wife and the daughter tomorrow. I'll consider it done. Ha! I mean, how can a man have the kind of money we're talking about? And then take his family to go and live in that cheap accommodation? Ha! Ha! Good day, sir. Hello, my dear. Good day, sir. Um, something came up in the office. What happened? The general manager is under pressure from the board. They want him to fire me. And who gave you this information? The GM himself. Like an ordinary employee that he is, he doesn't know the history of the company. The board of trustees insist that he fires me. Can he be trusted? Yes. Well, I'm not going to say anything now. But my plan is to gather all the information I need before I approach anyone with direct links to the company. Trust me, sir. Mr. Okafo can be trusted. I want to set up a meeting so all of us can meet. Good. You know what I found out? No, sir. Mm -hmm. The AC, the area commander, is a crook and a fraud star. Apart from the three million naira that he took from us, you are aware of that. Yes, sir. He also went to Atlas Oil went to the GM and collected 50 million naira of my money. He posed as my proxy and collected that money. He signed his death warrant and absconded. So we have searched everywhere for him. There's no trace of him and there's no information about him. Don't worry, my dear. I will deal with that idiot. So, sir, what exactly do you want us to do? Just relax. Nothing for now. When the time comes, I'll tell you exactly what you do. Okay, sir. But for now, I want you to go to my room and check a memo. Pastor Timothy has finally reported our case. And that account I gave him, account number I gave him, is now frozen. Sir, are you sure of what you're saying? <laughs> you know I don't talk anyhow. Go in and study the memo 
and come back and tell me whether Pastor Timothy has a right to his life. Everybody's gone, and we are still here. I ask you to wait behind this night so that we can talk as friends, as school managers. You are here before me. I believe you know a lot of things that I don't know. The board members suddenly they sent me a message asking me that I have to fire my secretary. I don't understand what that means. And I want to find out from you. Do you know why? Just about time you are told the truth. Do you remember I once asked you if you knew anything about the girl you hired as a you employed as a secretary? You said you didn't. As at the time I asked that question, I didn't know anything about her. And what do you know about her now? Because I still don't know her. I just know that I have a very wonderful secretary who is doing so well and I like her. She happens to be the daughter of Richard Nebolise. A man the board members of this company used Cardinal Crusade to eliminate. Now, they want you to fire her before she lays her hands on anything that will be detrimental to this company. Are you telling me to my face, with all sense of responsibility, that we have been grooming a company that was founded on questionable foundation, a company that actually murdered her principal investor? Is that what you're telling me? Cardinal Crusade refused any form of outright payoff for their services. They rather went into a perpetual agreement with the board members of this company to be paid on a monthly basis. And that was why I urged you to listen to them when they started this issue of um, increment in the money we pay them. The land upon which the headquarters of Onward Bank is built belonged to this same man. Of course, Cardinal Crusade delivered the land. And Onward Bank pays also on a monthly basis too. I feel used. As I'm looking at you now, I am very, very angry. Very, very angry with myself. If I had this information you are giving me now, that time I came here, I wouldn't have accepted to do this work. Never. I want you to put yourself in the position of the family members of that man that was murdered. Either he could be your brother. Have you ever thought about that? I don't get your drift. What are you talking about? Men can suppress justice for some time. But surely, men cannot suppress justice forever. I want us to hijack this company and deliver sin back to the original owners of the company. You never can tell. We may have better bargain from them than what we have now. You honestly think that hijacking this company is possible? Maybe I think the time is not right for me to refer you to that thing I have there. I believe you have seen it severally. But maybe you never pause to ponder what it means. Impossible. It is not a place to stop. It is a starting point to overcome. I want you to get one thing, Benson. It is not Impossible. In fact, I don't believe in impossibility. We can hijack this company in justice and fairness 
and deliver them to the original owners, then you better believe and know that it can be done. This hotel is surrounded by men of the Cardinal Crusade. Put the gun down and I'll tell you why I'm here. And who told you that I was here? <laughs> That's ridiculous. You didn't really think you could run away from us. You stole our money. Now, you were going to tell me what makes you think you can play with men that control violence. Your money, huh? Yes! Oh, ready for your games. I want you to tell me the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. My dear, what, what, what is the matter? Why are you overworking yourself? You said you wanted to use the empty flats down Osborne Street for guest house. Exactly. So, what is the position now? The position remains the same. That place is still being reserved as guest house. When would you stop lying? Why must you lie to your wife? Why? Are you calling me a liar? Don't try to manipulate me, okay? You know very well that you're lying. And you know I hate lies. What's come over you? You gave that flat to your girlfriend. And she is living there with her mother. Why then are you telling me that the flat is still reserved? What is the matter? Good evening, madam. Terribly sorry to barge in on you at this ungodly hour. My wife is angry with me because I am keeping my girlfriend and her mother in a flat that we earmarked as a, a guest house. I tried to explain to her, but she wouldn't listen. So, madam, please. I would appreciate if you can tell her who you are and why you are here. Please, please, my fellow woman, don't be angry with your husband. At least my daughter is not his girlfriend. Your husband is only our lawyer, just our lawyer. He's just helping us to resolve the death of my husband. We have a house of our own. I have my own house. But the police said that we shouldn't stay there anymore. Eh? So your husband gave us this place in love. Will we still go back to our place? Please, my dear, try to understand him. You heard? Are you satisfied? I mean, 
You don't appreciate what you have until you lose it. Please, darling, come on. Please. Please, madam, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. My husband explained everything to me, but I refuse to believe him. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm so sorry. Okay? It's okay. It's okay. You are just a woman. But please, learn how to trust your husband. Even when he is lying, and you know he is lying, don't ever tell him to his face that he is lying. It has a way it destroys marriages. How do I meet my husband again? How do I face you? You know how to face him. He is your husband. Oh my god. It's okay. Good night, okay? I will not rest until I find the truth. Well, sir, I am not going to go into unnecessary statements. I came here because I I I hate fraud. I, I don't associate myself with fraud, sir. Alicia promised to tell me the reason why the board had ordered me to fire her. She didn't get to speak until I cornered one of my colleagues who told me something that I am sure Alice doesn't even know. What I'm saying, sir, I came to make a specific statement. Whatever thing you think I can do to deliver the company back to the original owners, I am willing, as in extremely willing to do just that. Good, good, good. Um, Mr. Okafo, hearing from you now has given me some sort of confidence. Um, I used to look at you as one of the evil men the police are trying to clamp down and destroy. No, 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 no. Um, I'm glad to hear you're anti-cheating and you're anti-fraud. But <clears throat> here's my next question. Do you have any information from your colleagues Alice doesn't know of? Of course, that's what I said. I just said I said it already. The land upon which the headquarters of Onward Bank stands belongs to her father. He didn't sell that land to anybody. They seized the land from him. They used the mafia to seize that land. And up to today, the bank is paying rent to the mafia on that very property. The same thing with our company. Her father was the principal investor. Now, every other month, we are paying rent to the Mafia because the board actually used as a Mafia to eliminate her father. They do not want her around because they know she's very, very relevant in that company. Alright. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Okafo, do you have any documents that can prove to a judge in the court of law that your board hired the Mafia to kill late Richard Nebulisa? Well, as, as, as I sit here now, I don't have any such document. But if you can come around tomorrow, I am going to open up our storeroom. That is the archives where all the documents are kept. You take your time, you come through. Hopefully, you may see one or two documents that will give you the opening that you desire. It can be good, all right. all bad. Sadness, it can solve problems and cause problems. That's money, the power of money. It can put a smile on your face. The information at my disposal is that the area commander died at the Hotel Vajaga Limited. The truth is that he actually killed Steph. Yes. I am not here to discuss the highly compromised officer, but I'm here to tell you the information from my source. I'm sorry, sir, but we need to understand what you mean by your source. Inspector Gide has finally submitted his memo to the forces headquarters, and they're now ready to come and get us. I'm sorry, boss. You are confusing the boy, sir. You're confused? Look. An officer is arriving from Abuja today. Her name is Aisha. She's coming to partner with Inspector Jide, and their purpose is to eliminate us. She's going to arrive 
in Dynamic Airways at 12.05. Now, I want us to ensure that she does not reach her destination. Her destination should be this house. Abduct her and get her into this house. Do whatever you can to make sure that you bring her into this house. Am I clear? Um, sir, do we have your permission to kill her at the airport? If it's certain that we cannot come back with her. No, you don't have my permission to kill her at the airport. Do whatever you can to make sure that you bring her here. Am I clear? Just in case you find that you may not be able to bring her here, gentlemen, commit suicide. If you find out that you cannot bring her here as I've instructed you, kill yourselves. Don't come back. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Run along. It can be good or bad. It can bring happiness or sadness. It can solve I don't understand you. You mean since you assumed office as a GM, you never searched the archives? Why would I search the archives? I have never opened up the archives. Because I, I have this conviction that whatever thing, whatever record they have in the archives should not be of benefit to me because I am a man for the future. My mission in this company is to turn things around and that is exactly what I am doing. Nothing to do with the archives. Well, sir, I mean, do you think the inspector can find anything in that room? Definitely, he is a trained police officer. And I want to believe he knows what he wants. I've opened up the room for him and he's walking in there. Whatever thing he finds out, eventually we are going to know. But my primary concern is for justice to prevail. Oh, here he comes. Inspector. Hey, everyone. Inspector, did you find anything? Well, um, it would be a waste of time if I do spend any more here. I've seen what I need to see. What did you see? Uh, the agreement signed between your board of directors and the leader of the Cardinal Crusade. They even went the extra mile of also thumb printing. There's nothing more authentic. So are you telling us that you, you are not going to proceed to arrest them? Well, uh, not yet, but very soon. I'm working out a strategy to ensure a perfect outing. Now, this is what I need you to do. Go about your businesses as usual. Keep your lips sealed. You might never tell who tried to ruin everything. No problem, Thank you so much. Uh, the area commander has been arrested. Uh, he killed someone at uh, Radaga Hotels and the police commissioner ordered his immediate arrest. Is he still in your local cell or has he been transferred to the state command? Uh, the police commissioner sent some men to pick him up, sir. I do believe that his arrest is a huge step towards curbing down the activities of the mafia in the city, sir. I think I want him transferred to the first headquarters. Uh, then you will have to talk with the police commissioner, sir. Leave that for me. I know what to do. Thank you very much, sir. I'm wondering if I could speak with Aisha on your phone. I've been calling her lines and it's not going through. I'm sorry, sir. I don't understand what you're talking about. Uh, who is Aisha? Aisha is an inspector we sent to partner with you. We've received your report and we know you need an intelligent officer to assist you in your duties. She's due to have landed in your local airport. I've been calling her line and it's ringing no reply. Um, sir, I am not comfortable with this information. Why? Uh, sir, because uh, I'm not aware you sent anybody, you know, from the force headquarters, sir. 
Now you know. Ask her to call me as soon as she gets there. Aisha is an intelligent officer and you'll find her a perfect tool in your hands. We are relying on you to get rid of all these criminals and get them arrested and prosecuted. Thank you very much, sir. Why would you have to send someone here without telling me? So what do you want from me? We sent you to my territory. You had the guts to accept. Huh? What are your plans? Speak or get destroyed. You just let me go and you're sure of your protection because you cannot destroy me. You talk like somebody who has a backbone. Tell me what you know that I'd like to know. Or else I let my voice lose on you. <laughs> I'm heard by the orders of AIG Abakoba of the first headquarters. He is a very brutal officer. So you just let me go in peace or you'll be destroyed in pieces. You are in my custody and you had the guts to laugh and smile. Who gave you that right? The information at my disposal is that you're an idiot. You sound like an idiot. You behave like an idiot. And now I've confirmed that you're really an idiot. Oh, I love this girl. Can't you see that? You are in my custody and you have the guts to insult me, to abuse me right before my face. Boy, look after her. And a dream of an evil scheme for her. All right, boss. She needs to be taught a lesson. How do you want it? Do you want it soft or real hard? Get out! Get your filthy hands off me! Look, what, what is your take, Zayla? No, seriously, what is your take? Are you not concerned that an intelligence officer sent from force headquarters is missing? I'm very sorry, sir. But I do not understand why a female partner is sent to you. And what kind of statement is that? AIG Agwakoba himself told me, confirmed it, that an intelligence officer was sent from force headquarters here. And here's my second question. Why would you allow a night of fling affect your sense of judgment? Why? What I shared with you was not just a fling. I gave you myself, and I'm not ready to take it back. I'm just worried that a female partner was sent to you. I'm sorry, Constable, but you have to leave my office now. I will not disobey you. But take it from me. You're the best man I've ever had. Now stop there. Come here. Now listen to me. I am going to arrest you if I fail to see the officer sent from force headquarters. Do you understand me? Arrest me? For what? Because you're giving me this impression that you're the brain behind her sudden disappearance. Now if I find out you have anything to do with this, you'll be in serious trouble. Do you understand me? What are you saying? Are you saying you do not trust me? Are you saying you want to arrest me? All I am saying is you should pray I see her, else you're in serious trouble. Now leave my office, Constable. Destroy that inspector. I will keep searching till I find the truth. I, I am ready. Good. This is our ID card. From now on, you are no more Frances the call girl. You are now Aisha Zengina, the police inspector. Now, I don't like failures, so don't fail me. 
I have never failed before. Good. Run along. Yes. I'm your new partner. You look to me like a civilian because you don't have the flair of an officer. <laughs> I am an officer. Look, we don't have any time to waste, okay? The instruction is that we go straight to confront the Mafia. You don't tell me about instructions. I do understand my instructions. Let me see your ID card. I already show you. I want to have a closer look at it. Okay. This is my ID card. Why do you doubt me? You're not the person in this ID card. Oh, I took that picture many years ago. You know, women change faster. You should know that. To what police college did you go? Mm, Ikeja Police College. When? 1990. Name five lecturers at your police college. What kind of question is that? Who are you? Look, look, you're pointing a gun at a fellow officer. Stand up. I said, stand up! Get off that! Now tell me who you are, who sent you, and where is my real partner, Inspector Aisha, from Force Headquarters? I am your partner. Why are you embarrassing me? Officers! Officers! Stand up! What? Take this impersonator. Yes, sir. And hang her upside down. Head down, legs up. Torture approved. What? Move her. Move, 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 move. What's happening? Hold it, hold it, hold it. It's okay. Are you ready to talk now? Okay, I'll tell you. I am Frances Anna. I'm not a police officer. God save us from the mafia. We even have them in the force headquarters. I'm sure their contacts in the force headquarters must have told them of Inspector Aisha missing. Now I want that impersonator. When I called in a secluded cell, until further notice. Do you hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Are you there? Yes, sir. You may dismiss. She hit me across the face and I passed out. Only for me to wake up and, and, and realize that she's gone, sir. How could you allow yourself to be knocked out by a woman after all the training that I gave you? What's wrong with you? What kind of human being are you? Huh? You're an idiot. Go and get out. And comb the environment now, now. Comb everywhere. She can't go far with her pants and bra. Now, do that. Idiot. The central police station is not far from here. CPSK? Yes. No, madam, here I'm going to go to that place, so my pass is not there complete. Listen, I'm a police inspector. I was attacked by arm robbers. Look at me now. Just take me there. Nobody will arrest you, I promise. Of course, of course, though. They are the first woman again. They don't give me weapons in my life. Just like the sun.
to understand I don't have time. My partner who was sent from the first headquarters in Abuja has been kidnapped. Now, we are currently making arrangements to making sure that the ownership of the company gets transferred to Mrs. Richards and her daughter. This is what I want you to do. Call an emergency meeting of all the board of directors, including the leader of the mafia. Give them a cogent reason why they should meet at your office at the same time. When they're complete, page me. That will not be a problem at all. I can even gather them in one hour. You know, all they need to hear is that there is a windfall to be shared. And all of them will gather to share the said windfall. I'll do as you said. Okay. Inspector Aisha, I'm sorry for the ordeal you went through. I have to say it's very unfortunate. As we speak, the criminal who was sent to impersonate you is wallowing in cell four. Um, the leader of the mafia will soon be arrested with his fellow criminals. There's a strategy in place. Okay, fine. I need to hear the strategy because I cannot wait to lay my hands on this idiot that made me jump down through a very high to the street with and bra. Can you imagine that? <laughs> um... Like I said, it's very unfortunate to take it easy, all right? You will definitely lay your hands on him. I'll brief you on the strategy. Let's go to the canteen and eat, okay? You understand that um, the success of the police is based on planning and information. So, please, if we may go and eat on me, please. On behalf of staff and management of this company, I wish to welcome our distinguished board members to this emergency meeting. Mr. Manager, are you telling me that you are the one who is going to address us in this meeting? Huh? You are not qualified to, 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 to talk to me. I'm sorry, Sir Bruno. But I think the time has come for someone to educate you on justice and fairness. Oh, shut up! What the hell do you know about justice and fairness to educate me about it? Shut up. I'm, I'm sorry, Sabrina, but we know a whole lot on justice and fairness. We have come to realize that you do not understand anything about justice and fairness. And we have organized this meeting simply to inform you that men can suppress justice sometime, but they cannot surely suppress justice forever. You would have been an ordinary thief if I leveled this place into the rubble. You would have picked up and buried it. Gentlemen! You're all under arrest for the murders of Richard Nebulisa and Professor Mion and also attempting to hijack another man's company, actually hijacking his company. Now I advise you keep silent, else anything you say right here and now will be used against you as evidence in the court of law. You won't arrest me. You know who the hell I am. Do you? Boys, who do you think I am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Hall.
Please move. Now you know who has the ultimate power. I have the ultimate power. This is my city. And I'm about to come. Okay, send me up here! has always been and still is the last hope of the common man. All the necessary documents have been secured and A and D by the order of a competent judge is now your company. <gasps> oh my God. Ah, it was a, a rigorous and thorough process but I am delighted I am very, very happy to tell you that uh, we are at the end of the tunnel. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of my chambers, I'd like to congratulate you and welcome you into the world of bliss that your husband, your father, labored to give you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy to. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 